Each one of you will put flight to a thousand of the enemy. One person causing a thousand to flee is what that's saying, which is absolutely crazy. Nobody, no regular human being should stand a chance in a fight against a thousand people. And yet, with God's help, that is possible. Not only possible, but Joshua is saying it will happen. What's up, cool people? My name is Matt. Welcome back to our Bible study. All right. So, we are looking at Joshua chapter 23. So, um, the, the book of Joshua has basically taken us through the conquering of the promised land, or at least the majority of it, by the Israelites. Um, and then they divided up the land that was conquered amongst them and then established a couple of other special cities and areas for things like cities of refuge, places for the Levites to live, which the Levites basically took care of a lot of the um, temple duties and sacrifices and things like that. Um, although the temple wasn't a thing yet, it was the tabernacle at this point, but I digress. Same basic idea. Um, so now I think everybody in the actual like land of Israel at this point, um, is kind of settled back into where they all, or not back, but is settled into their respective, uh, tribal territories and it, everything's basically done <laughs> with settling into the land that God had promised them and their ancestors. So going by the heading here, we're about to get some final words from Joshua. So here we go. Joshua chapter 23. The years passed, and the Lord had given the people of Israel rest from all their enemies. Joshua, who was now very old, called together all the elders, leaders, judges, and officers of Israel. He said to them, I am now a very old man. You have seen everything the Lord your God has done for you during my lifetime. The Lord your God has fought for you against your enemies. I have allotted to you as your homeland all the land of the nations yet unconquered, as well as the land of those we have already conquered, from the Jordan River to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. This land will be yours, for the Lord your God will himself drive out all the people living there now. You will take possession of their land, just as the Lord your God promised you. Okay, pause in there real quick. Um, so... Josh was old, not exactly surprising after all that's happened. And it, it, there is still, by his own admission, land that, uh, you know, all the land of the nations yet unconquered. So there were still some people living, some other people groups living within the promised land that the Israelites had yet to defeat or drive out or take over their land. Uh, because there were some people they didn't necessarily drive out completely, but, you know, they basically, like, took them on as s servants of a sort. Um Pretty much, I, I, I guess, I guess it was you know some of the some of the peoples that did not want to fight against the Israelites decided, all right, you know what, just take it, take the land. We don't want to fight you. We don't think we'd stand a chance. We'd rather be your servants than die. <laughs> but there were others who they had yet to really encounter and or push back or out or subdue. Um, 
But there was a lot of land they had already conquered. So all of the area that I guess had been promised as their possession, so to speak, by God, uh, they divvied up the entirety of that land, even what hadn't been conquered yet. Um, also, footnote there, Mediterranean Sea, Hebrew just says the Great Sea, which is the same thing, essentially. It's just a different name for it, because that was by far the largest sea that they would have really had any sort of proximity to. Sometimes you even see it referred to as just the sea. Kind of how we might refer to the ocean, generally speaking. Sometimes we even say the sea nowadays. Uh, but for geographical purposes, this translation will often still refer to that as the Mediterranean Sea because it was the largest one near there. Anyway, so Joshua essentially reassuring them that, yes, there is land that still hasn't been conquered, but God is still powerful and still with you and he will give you the ability to take possession of this land. So anyway, verse six. So be very careful to follow everything Moses wrote in the book of instruction. Do not deviate from it, turning either to the right or to the left. Make sure you do not associate with the other people still remaining in the land. Do not even mention the names of their gods, much less swear by them or serve them or worship them. Rather, cling tightly to the Lord your God, as you have done until now. For the Lord has driven out great and powerful nations for you, and no one has yet been able to defeat you. Each one of you will put to flight a thousand of the enemy, for the Lord your God fights for you, just as he has promised. So be very careful to love the Lord your God. Okay, so adding on to Joshua saying that, all right, don't worry, God will give you this land as your possession. There's a little bit of a caveat to it, though, because it's like, okay, if you follow God's instructions as given to us by Moses, then God will be with you and you will conquer these lands. If you don't, uh, it might not turn out so well, but I think we're about to get into that. Um, and definitely for sure, don't like start worshiping other gods or idols or whatever that other people in the area worship because those haven't been helping you thus far. Those have not given you victory against all these other people groups. It's only the Lord our God. Um, and in fact, you know, we have been helped so much by our God and will continue to be if we follow him that, you know, each one of you will put flight to a thousand of the enemy. One person causing a thousand to flee is what that's saying, which is absolutely crazy. Nobody no regular human being should stand a chance in a fight against a thousand people. Unless there's like a massive difference in, you know, like weaponry and or armor or what have you. But still, those are normally ridiculous odds. And yet, with God's help, that is possible. Not only possible, but... Joshua is saying it will happen as long as they follow the Lord. But then we get to verse 12. But if you turn away from him and cling to the customs of the survivors of these nations remaining among you, and if you intermarry with them, then know for certain that the Lord your God will no longer drive them out of your land. Instead, they will be a snare and a trap to you 
a whip for your backs and thorny brambles in your eyes, and you will vanish from this good land the Lord your God has given you. Yeah. So there's the alternative. Um, which is not good. Um, so they didn't necessarily always kill every single person of a particular other people group uh, whenever they conquered the lands. But they they still were not I mean, the reason for not intermarrying with them was just because, you know, being in such a close relationship with someone, you know, there tends to be a significant amount of influence over each other. And, you know, things that you do tend to kind of uh, just be affected by you know, what the other person puts their time and attention towards. Just a natural thing that happens in marriage. Um, and then, obviously, it's, it's, it's not going to go well for God's people if they then, you know, turn their attention away from the Lord because of intermarrying with these other people or by any other means, you know, worshiping their gods. Um, and then we get to verse 14. Still Joshua speaking. This is all Joshua speaking. Soon I will die, going the way of everything on earth. Deep in your hearts you know that every promise of the Lord your God has come true. Not a single one has failed. But as surely as the Lord your God has given you the good things he promised, he will also bring disaster on you if you disobey him. He will completely destroy you from this good land he has given you. If you break the covenant of the Lord your God by worshiping and serving other gods, his anger will burn against you, and you will quickly vanish from the good land he has given you. Yeah, so... More encouragement to the same effect. Um, also, I think he mentioned vanishing from the land previously, but... You know, there there were multiple prophecies, essentially, given by Moses slash by God through Moses or other things like that, just spelling out all the different things that would happen if and when they turn away from the Lord. And it, that included being treated as slaves getting exiled from their homeland, which would be where they're living in this moment that that, that Joshua is speaking to them. Um, that, you know, all, all sorts of crazy bad things would happen. That they would be, you know, starving. That they would do all sorts of crazy things just to stay alive. And... All, all essentially because of them disobeying him. And yet there was still, you know, assurance in the midst of that, that, you know, if they sincerely turned back to the Lord, that things would get better. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> essentially, Joshua's final words come down to, all right, I'm getting old. I can't necessarily lead you in all these things anymore. So just know, like, make sure to continue following the Lord and the instructions of Moses so that things can continue to go well with you. Otherwise, it's not going to be good. Um, 
yeah, uh, it's, there's not really a whole lot else to add on to that. Um, this does still in some slight way wind up being a bit prophetic. <laughs> or really, I mean, you would think it should have just been obvious to them at this point. Because the times that, you know, the 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 prior generations had turned away from God, things went poorly. Or even the times when certain people amongst them turned away from God, it went poorly. And But, like, when they followed the Lord completely, it went well. So, like, it should be obvious at this point. And yet, <laughs> still reminding them, because, you know, Joshua, who was their leader at this point, their primary leader anyway, was about to die. And it, it, he wants to make sure that the the things that were guiding him all along the way, he continues to, that, that, that he imparts that upon the rest of the Israelites in hopes that they continue to follow that way of thinking. But yeah, um, I guess that does it for Joshua 23. Kind of a short chapter. All right, so it says that these were Joshua's final words to the people of Israel. These were actually more accurately his final words to the leaders of Israel. You'll see that in, in the next chapter, he still has more to say to all the people. But these were his last words to the leaders. So, yeah. <laughs> anyway, just thought I'd uh, head things off at, you know, early on regarding possible confusion over that. But anyway... As always, like and share if you enjoyed the video, subscribe to the channel, and click the bell if you're on YouTube to get updates when I post new videos. If you're seeing this over on Rumble, give me a follow there. Either way, look down in the description to get info on other social media pages and all that good stuff, including the Discord server where we can, you know, discuss stuff outside of videos. It's going to be a lot easier to get feedback and for you all to give suggestions and stuff. Not that I don't see it on YouTube and other places like that. But, you know, a bit more of a community feel on the Discord server. Anyway, make sure you look down the, below the description as well to see what other people might have commented. Leave your own comments there if you're not much of a Discord person. Um, but anyway, hopefully I'll see you soon for another video. But until next time, stay cool, people.